welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Fairy Ann and I make YouTube videos about Lolita fashion and Lolita fashion related content like sewing tutorials. This video is a sewing tutorial and I will be teaching you guys how I did this. I've actually owned this dress for well over a year now and I haven't been able to wear it because it has been too small on me. The back used to be a zipper and I'll show you guys later how it was. So if you have a dress or anything that is too small, I hope that this video is helpful to you. All right, without further ado, let's get going. So this dress is from the Chinese brand Dark Star Island. I bought it secondhand and I forgot well, I was kind of lazy and didn't really check the measurements, so it is too small on me. Um, and there's no shearing, so there's no forgiveness. It does not even fit around my rib cage. I cannot zip it up all the way, so I am going to fix that. So the plan here is to uh, remove this zipper and uh, move it to one of the side seams and then instead make this back part shearing. So that way it'll be bigger and more forgiving and more comfortable. Fun fact, this dress is also an optional one piece. The sleeves are just buttoned on the straps. So while I'm working on this dress, I'll probably remove these just so there's less stuff to worry about. Luckily, this dress came with different accessories like this head bow. This head bow has a lot of fabric and material to it so I thought this would be perfect to use as extra fabric for the back. I'm really lucky in this regard to have this extra fabric to be able to use. Um, usually when people alter dresses they like to use the waist ties that come with it but if you do not have any of those options um, just using a fabric that's close to the color and type of material as best you can usually works. And here are all of the supplies that you will need. The extra fabric to work with, a matching shade of thread. I actually forgot to bring this with me to the fabric store as a re color reference when I was picking up the thread, so I had to guess, but I think I did a pretty good job. It's pretty close. Yeah, it'll work. A seam ripper, a tape measure, some scissors. I forgot that you also need anti-fray glue and a very small safety pin and some elastic for the shearing. I prefer this knit elastic as opposed to the other kind, just because I found that um, this type has more give, so it's a bit more comfortable and not so stiff. And I also like this fourth inch width. Um, I just found that this size works the best. It holds up better and it's thin enough where it's not so bulky. Yeah, I highly recommend this type. All right, I have removed the sleeves and now it's time to uninstall the zipper. Now that we have the zipper off, it's time to start thinking about adding the fabric to the back for shearing. I'm also going to have to expand this waist part here because if it's connected, that's not going to help me at all because I need all of it stretchy. So I'm going to have to expand all the way down here to the skirt. So to do that, I'm also going to have to seam rip the skirt away from the bodice fabric so that way I can attach it back on when I have the extra fabric here and that way it'll stretch with it. I didn't realize at first that the skirt and the lining skirt were both surged to the bodice so if you've ever tried seam ripping a surged edge you know how difficult it is so I just went ahead and took scissors to it because I couldn't be bothered. No explanation needed for this part, just taking apart the head bow to use the materials. I 
have them folded so they are pretty long and I have folded them in half which makes them about the perfect length I need. That worked. That just worked out for me that way really nicely. Um, you don't have to do it like this. Um, so, but you do need two layers of fabric for the elastic. So you can have whatever fabric you have left over or from another project or whatever, just any random fabric for the underside and that should work for you just fine. Now we're just going to focus on the back panel. Take your elastic and stretch it as far as the width of the panel is, leaving a little bit of extra room on each side, then cut it to that length. With that piece of elastic that you just cut, cut another piece the exact same length. Repeat that until you're satisfied with the amount that you want to have on the back. Space out your elastics down the panel. Having a ruler helps ensure that they are evenly spaced. I did three quarters of an inch between each elastic, but you can do whatever looks right to you. Mark at each spot where you want the elastic to go. I'm using a washable marker, but honestly, it's a safer bet to use chalk. Now, I know I should have filmed this part where I was sewing, but I didn't, so I'll try to explain here. The idea here is you are sewing little channels for the elastic to go through. I always put one at the very top so that way there's no fabric ruffling up there. And I kind of eyeballed this part, but generally you want to make the channels as wide as the elastic is. Now with a very small safety pin that you know fits through the channels, attach it to one end of an elastic and start feeding it through the channel. After you finish feeding all the elastic through, make sure that the fabric stretches all the way and that there is visible ends of the elastic on both sides. Sew down each side of the panel, making sure that you backstitch over every elastic. Trim off the extra elastic bits. and either serge or zigzag stitch down the sides. Next, attach the shearing panel to the dress, sewing it to the lining first, then the outer fabric. Be sure to sew it inside out or right sides together. Now onto the skirt portion. I closed up the seams where the zipper used to be. Then I reattached the skirt to the bodice up until the new shearing panel, giving myself extra fabric so that the skirt will stretch with the shearing as it's pulled. When you sew the remaining portion of the skirt to the shearing, be sure to stretch the shearing as you sew. And the shearing is done. This part is completely optional, but I decided to add some lace which will double as anchors for lacing down the back. If you do do this step, I recommend using a strong and sturdy lace with big enough holes for a ribbon to feed through. I would also advise putting a dab of anti-fray glue on the ends to keep the lace from unraveling over time. You can also use the same glue on the ends of the lacing ribbon if you wish. Now it's finally finished. Let's try it on. This is the first time I've been able to wear this dress and I'm so happy I finally got around to fixing it. I believe that tailoring clothes is a very important life skill for anyone to have and I want everyone to be able to wear their clothes with comfort and confidence, no matter their skill level. And that is the end of this video. 
Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this was really helpful to you. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you would like to join the fairy circle, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and also click the bell icon to be notified of the next time I post a video. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Okay, let's just leave it here.